Hey, and welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm your host, Caleb Kinchlow. For centuries, humans have been peering into the cosmos. Our fascination has driven us to send humans and robotic missions to other planetary bodies. Doing so, however, comes with its own sets of challenges. One of the biggest challenges is entry into an atmosphere. When you enter into an atmosphere such as Mars or Earth, you have to actually come back through the atmosphere at high speeds. And what you actually end up doing is generating a lot of friction and a lot of heat. Aerodynamic heating occurs when you actually go through the atmosphere and you impact the air molecules. And so the air molecules are actually transferring friction to the vehicle and that is the heat that they actually generate onto the vehicle itself. Space vehicles that enter a planetary atmosphere like Earth's or Mars require the use of a thermal protection system or TPS to protect them from aerodynamic heating. There have been several types of TPS used throughout the history of spaceflight. You might be the most familiar with this, the recently retired space shuttle. The TPS on the shuttle was made of a series of specially designed heat tiles placed on the wings and underside of the orbiter. As the shuttle glided back down through the atmosphere, these tiles protected it from the 1500 degrees Celsius temperatures experienced during atmospheric re-entry. But the space shuttle's tiles aren't the only type of thermal protection system. Now, NASA is working on a new kind of re-entry system called hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerators. The shape is similar to that of the Apollo capsules, but there's one major difference. A Hyatt is, like the name implies, inflatable, which means it's not rigid. This means a whole new type of thermal protection system is necessary. The heating on the exterior of the heat shield is an aerodynamic heating that gets really, really super hot. I mean, it, we're not talking about the oven temperature you can put your hand in. This, this is stuff that's gonna burn up aluminum. A Hyatt is actually an inflatable heat shield that can take a lot of folding. We actually pack it into a tight little package and then it opens up and it's still got the capability of taking that thermal heating that's gonna happen when it re-enters. Right now we're working on thin materials, okay? Uh, we've gotta have materials that are gonna survive entering the atmosphere. So we're looking at a combination. You can't just have one material. We have not found a single material that's gonna do everything we need it to. So we actually have layers of materials that we use. Um, what we've got here is a Nextel, uh, which Nextel is actually used in aircraft engines. Uh, it's just a thermal insulation that aircraft use. We have pyrogel, this black stuff. This is an insulator. This is actually a pipe insulator is the current use for this material, and now we're using it for space applications. In addition, this is Kapton coated Kevlar, and we coat it with Kapton to give it a gas barrier. The gas barrier is used so that we don't have hot air penetrations that'll get to the inflatable and damage our structure underneath. So time out. You're telling me that a fabric is going to withstand the searing temperatures of planetary re-entry? How is that possible? Look at a ceramic mug. It's a material, we call it ceramic. They're designed to withstand extremely high temperatures, up to 3,000 degrees F. The one thing that we have been able to do with these ceramic materials is that we can now make them into very thin fibers. Uh, basically, they look like hairs, uh, so, but they're high temperature hairs. But, so you have these high temperature ceramic fibers, and then what we do is we use traditional weaving technology like you would see in drapes or sheets or anything else, and we weave them into a fabric. And now what I have is I have a high temperature fabric. So now I have a fabric that can sit on the outside of my vehicle and withstand 3,000 degrees F. I knew that Kevlar can be used for body armor, but I never would have thought to use it for something like a thermal protection system. We just went to each one of the different companies and bought this material, and now we're combining it in ways that no one else has to actually be able to use this. And it's, it's so far, we've done a bunch of in-house testing, and it's been working great for us. It's cool to see NASA taking current technologies and using them in new ways. It's all just part of the cycle of technological advancement and just one of the objectives of NASA's new game-changing development office. And who knows what kind of advancements we'll make thanks to technologies like Hyatt. Thanks for watching NASA Launchpad. I'm Caleb, catch you next time.